Welcome to my video series on autoimmune disease. I'm Robin Puglia and this first video is an introduction to autoimmunity. I am a nutritional therapist but I am also an external consultant for Regenerous Laboratories here in the UK. Um, I'm employed by them to provide um, education and also technical support for the various different functional laboratories that they represent. So in this capacity I'm associated with Cyrex Labs, Doctors Data, Dutch, um, which is comprehensive hormone testing and several other labs um, including those around infectious agents and environmental toxins. However, I've got no financial interests um, in any of those companies. So you purchasing the test or using the test um, actually makes no real difference to me. But I am um, lucky to have access to a lot of information and a lot of training as a result of my affiliations with these companies. So I'm very grateful for that. Uh, it does inform some of my work, but again, no financial interest to me. And I just wanted to sort of say that up front. So who am I? Um, I'm obviously Robin Puglia, but I'm a nutritional therapist and I'm a certified functional medicine practitioner. I'm in full-time clinical practice and as I already mentioned, I also do technical support for Regenerous Labs and I mentor other nutritionists and also physicians here in the UK on um, all of the different aspects of functional medicine. I'm also a mum. I've got two little daughters who, as I make this video, are one and two. And I have celiac disease, um, which I've had some complications with over the years and has inevitably led me to focus on autoimmunity and complex cases and unexplained illness in my own practice, which I find very, very interesting and very fulfilling. So that's essentially the lake that I'm swimming in on a daily basis. And it's pretty exciting to me what's happening um, in our um, in our education and in the medical literature that there's a lot more awareness, there's a lot of discussion around autoimmunity happening at the moment. Um, and it's also astonishing when you start to read the medical literature, what information has been available for 15 years, 10 years, 20 years, that isn't really commonly known and commonly understood or practiced in, in clinical practice. So for those of you in the general public who have been having problems um, feeling understood or feeling recognised by your physicians, you know, I want you to know that that information is out there, but it's not really commonly known. <clears throat> So I'm going to start with a couple of definitions of terms. So number one, what is autoimmunity? So autoimmunity in a nutshell is a couple of things. Um, number one, the immune system, and it can be the specific or the non-specific immune system, loses tolerance to a protein in our own body. As a result of this loss of tolerance to self, the immune system initiates an inflammatory reaction that is directed at that protein in our body. This inflammatory reaction and inflammatory um, attack results in tissue or organ damage um, that eventually means that that tissue or organ um, has symptoms and doesn't work either at capacity or at all anymore. Now, when that's bad enough, um, it's considered a disease and then it's classified as an autoimmune disease. So autoimmunity is loss of tolerance to self proteins that causes an inflammatory reaction that can end up in a disease state. Now we use the term antibody and I'm not sure that we necessarily really understand what an antibody is. Right? So antibodies are part of the process that I've just described. They are basically a protein that the immune system uses as a flag. The immune system attaches the flag to another protein um, to signal uh, to the immune system, yoo there's a problem here, this is the guy you're looking for. And when the immune system sees that flag and gets that message, then this triggers um, the inflammatory response, the attack that is targeted at that tissue that's got the antibodies stuck in it. So here you can see a couple of images. Um, you know, this one's obviously a cartoon. This is a B cell that's shooting the antibodies out into the system. And here we have a tissue that's got multiple antibodies attached to it. So this 
protein here, this tissue here, has been flagged by the immune system using the antibodies um, to direct the immune attack at this target. And um, it's interesting and important to understand that what you see here, the protein and antibody um, compound, these antibodies are attached to the protein. So this is a new molecule um, and it's called an, an immune complex where you've got the antigen and the antibody attached together. <clears throat> So there are more than 80 distinct autoimmune diseases and it's estimated that 5 to 8% of the population have a diagnosed autoimmune disease. And I think that it's important to understand that a lot of people have autoimmunity and a lot of people have autoimmune disease that isn't yet diagnosed. So within the celiac community, for example, it's considered that about one in every six to seven people who have celiac disease have a diagnosis of celiac disease. And that's people who have end stage, who are actually walking around in the community with end stage celiac disease who haven't had it recognized yet. So autoimmunity is um, underdiagnosed a lot of the time. <clears throat> Although with the discussion and with more awareness around autoimmune disease and the way that they can present, I feel like that is changing, but at this moment in time, it's still um, underdiagnosed. So early stage autoimmune symptoms and immune dysregulation are present in uh, up to 20% of the population. <clears throat> and this makes autoimmune disease uh, as prevalent as things like um, uh, cardiovascular disease presentations like hypertension or high blood pressure and metabolic syndrome, which includes things like diabetes and prediabetes. <clears throat> so there's a list on autoimmuneregistry.org, which is a not-for-profit in the USA, that includes all of the autoimmune diseases that are confirmed, but it also includes um, any disease that has no known cause and is suspected of being autoimmune in at least three separate papers in PubMed. And that number, uh, that, so the total number of uh, confirmed and suspected is actually 154. So it's a, it is probably a much bigger problem than just that 80 um, distinct autoimmune diseases. And we also understand now that there is a, um, there is a, um, an element of autoimmunity in some diseases that are not considered autoimmune diseases, such as cardiovascular disease. You know, atherosclerosis can be autoimmune in nature, but cardiovascular disease is not considered an autoimmune disease. So there are some shades of gray in what is autoimmunity and how does that actually present in any given person. <clears throat> Since so many of these disorders share similar symptoms, it can be really difficult for the healthcare provider to actually pinpoint a specific disease. Um, I've created a list. This is not, of course, all 80 or all 154, but these are some of the more common ones that I personally see in clinical practice or that I think are um, probably the most common ones. <clears throat> Initial symptoms of autoimmune disease um, usually include fatigue. I think almost everybody that I've ever seen that has any form of autoimmunity has fatigue as part of the presentation, but also aches and pains in tendons, joints, muscles, headaches, inflammation in pretty much any area of the body. So, for example, inflammatory skin conditions can be a sign or symptom and low fever or feelings of malaise. <clears throat> so distinctly more women than men are affected by autoimmune diseases. So the, the exception to that is actually type 1 diabetes and inflammatory bowel disease, where they tend to be equal or slightly more male in presentation. And nobody is really sure, 100% sure, why that is. It's thought that oestrogen plays a very strong role. And in fact, we know a lot, a, a lot about the role that oestrogen plays in immune system dysregulation and uh, inflammation and creating a, um, <clears throat> a stronger predisposition towards autoimmunity. And of course, women have much higher levels of oestrogen than men do. But it's also considered as part of this question that women are exposed to many, many more chemicals on a daily basis than men are just by 
um, our skincare, our hair care, the makeup that we put on, um, the beauty salons that we visit, the beauty treatments that we have, and also cleaning products, which we are, even in this day and age, in general in the population, more exposed to than men are. And I'm not going to have this devolve into <laughs> commentary on that, but it's at the moment still a fact. <clears throat> so here in the UK, autoimmune disease has been in the top 10 leading causes of death at all age groups under 75, and it's also thought that this is underestimated. <clears throat> now, those are alarming facts, you know, leading cause of death, top 10 leading cause of death, but autoimmune disease isn't really about death. It's about suffering. It's about loss of quality of life. You know, if you've got an autoimmune disease or somebody in your family that you love has an autoimmune disease, then you may have already been told that your future consists of many years of progressively worsening symptoms accompanied by increasing strengths of some very serious medications, um, including steroids and other immune suppressants that themselves have horrible side effects. So what we're really talking about is you missing out on your life. We're talking about time missed with family and friends. We're talking about days spent alone or in bed, in pain, maybe afraid for your future. You know, we're talking about you or your loved one not fulfilling hopes and dreams for your life or for yourself. We're talking about disability. You know, so while the facts about um, autoimmunity and death are, of course, shocking and important, really the scope of what we're talking about is much bigger much bigger than that and again you know that suffering and that pain is something that I think is equally as serious as death. <clears throat> so who are you? You are a community of people who are really woefully underserved by our current medical system. <clears throat> Being diagnosed with an autoimmune disease in our current system goes something like this. Okay, you present with symptoms that are bad enough that they're causing you distress or um, that they're leading you to feel like something is seriously wrong and you, you contact your doctor or your um, primary care physician. <clears throat> you may, at that point, um, have some tests done um, or you may have the symptoms dismissed as just being stress or just being normal. Um, and you may actually have that happen repeatedly for a period of time um, until the symptoms that you have, such as joint pain or um, you know, gastrointestinal distress, um, get bad enough to prevent normal function. <clears throat> Your test results may be actually coming back normal or within normal range. And um, you may end up with a diagnosis such as IBS or fibromyalgia or some other syndrome that goes a certain way to um, explaining the constellation of symptoms that you might be presented with. Now this can go on, oopsie, this can actually go on for years, five years, 10 years. Um, you might see multiple doctors and have multiple medical appointments during that time. And eventually when things get bad enough and your tissue or your organ system is damaged to the point where um, it's, it, it is obviously diseased, then you're going to get a diagnosis. And when you get a diagnosis at that point, you're told that there's nothing to do except to learn to live with it. Um, that you'll be given drugs to help you cope with the symptoms and of course that diet and lifestyle have absolutely nothing to do with either the development of your illness, managing it or helping to improve your situation. <clears throat> so what do you need? You know, this is what I really believe um, needs to change in the conversations that we're having around autoimmune disease, okay? You need somebody who is going to listen to you. You need a healthcare provider that is going to be empathetic towards you and who will partner with you in your care, who will listen to what you have to say about your experiences and your symptoms and what you think makes it worse and what you think makes it better. You actually need to be educated and you need to be empowered about your health and about your body because there are many variables that you can change. And in changing those variables, um, you will be able to support your underlying health and improve your quality of life. I think it is a fundamental 
truth that diet um, is a prominent part of autoimmune disease management and in some cases it's a part of autoimmune disease development as well but once you already have that autoimmune disease then understanding how diet and lifestyle can totally change the the trajectory of your life with regards to improving your quality of life um, is a really important thing and a really empowering thing because it gives you um, something that you can do in your daily life every day that can help you to feel better <clears throat> so I think that um, functional medicine is perfectly placed to provide you with the support that you need um, if you are being failed by our conventional system. And I would like to also say um, at this point that I'm not criticising our conventional system. I think that our medical system is actually brilliant. I think that it is state of the art and I think that it saves lives and it's really, really important. But for chronic care, the conventional model uh, isn't working for people with autoimmune disease. And if you have an autoimmune disease, I think you'll probably appreciate that that's true. And that's essentially probably why you're here watching this video in the first place. So if you want to find a functional medicine practitioner, um, I, oops, I have um, listed on this slide uh, the functional medicine website where you can go to find a practitioner in your area. <clears throat> So that brings me to the end of introduction to autoimmune disease. The next um, video uh, in this series is actually on autoimmunity and the immune system. So stay tuned for part two, um, because I'm gonna be diving into what actually happens in the immune system that leads you to developing autoimmune disease in the first place. And when we understand what's happening, we have a much better ability to be able to um, in make interventions that help to to affect and change the, the immune system hopefully for the better i hope you've enjoyed this video and please do um, subscribe to my youtube channel and um and click on the link for part two okay enjoy the rest of your day <laughs>